Hi and welcome to this video where I'm going to be discussing how the bonding within, within and between molecules affects the physical properties of molecular substances. And this is something that really you must be able to describe and discuss in order to succeed at um, NCA level 2 chemistry and structure and bonding. Okay, so first off, it's important to think about what we're talking about when we talk about bonding. So molecules are quite special in that there are two types of bonding that happen within a molecule. So first off, there's the bonding between the atoms in the molecule. So if you think of a molecule like water, you can think about the bonding between the hydrogen and oxygen atoms in that water molecule. And that's a type of covalent bonding, and it's very, very strong. But when we start thinking about the properties of substances, actually what we're interested in is the bonding between the molecules, so between one water molecule and the next water molecule. And this is a type of bonding known as intermolecular bonding, so bonding between molecules. Okay, so that's really what's affecting your physical properties. The covalent bonds between the molecule are very strong and very, very stable. So they don't actually change. They have no real effect on the physical properties. So the only things that are really important is, is the intermolecular bonding. The properties that we're considering in this standard are solubility in both water and non-polar solvents, boiling point and melting point, electrical conductivity, and hardness, ductility, and brittleness. So first off, thinking about those, this bonding. Intermolecular bonding is the bonding between molecules. Okay, that's what inter means. It means between molecules. And generally, we're talking about attractions between positive and negative parts of the molecule. So the more positive or the more negative something is, the more it's going to be attracted to things of the opposite charge. So the stronger that force of attraction is going to be, the greater the amount of intermolecular bonding you're going to have. All molecules do undergo some type of intermolecular bonding, but the strength of it varies. And it varies depending on the polarity of the molecule, which is why you really have to have an understanding of polarity before you can start understanding the strength of intermolecular bonding. Okay, so polar molecules, if you'll recall, have one part of the molecule that is negative and one part of the molecule that is positive. Because of that, you can imagine that if we've got neighbouring molecules that have positive and negative bits, then all those positives and negatives will be attracted to each other. Whereas non-polar molecules have that positive and negative charge evenly distributed throughout the molecule, so there's no major areas of positive or negative charge. This means that the attractions between your molecules, the attractions between those very weak positive and negative bits, are going to be much weaker. So the more polar a molecule is, the stronger the strength of its intermolecular bonding is going to be. That is absolutely key to all of the discussion. I'll say it again just to be really clear. The stronger or the more polar a molecule is, then the greater the strength of the intermolecular bonding, and therefore the more significant that intermolecular bonding is going to be. Okay, so first thing we're going to think about is melting and boiling. And hopefully back in about year nine, you learned that when particles change state from solid to liquid or liquid to gas, which is what we're talking about when we're talking about melting and boiling, we add heat and that heat gives the particles energy and the energy that the particles gain makes them move apart from each other. In other words, to move from a solid to a liquid or a liquid to a gas, we have to break the intermolecular bonds bonds that are holding those molecules together. Now, I will say this very, very clearly. You never, ever break the covalent bonds. I don't ever want to see an exam answer that talks about breaking covalent bonds. I will come back and smack you upside the head with the paper. Please do not talk about that. When you break a covalent bond, you make a new molecule. That is not what's happening when you're melting and boiling. Okay, so Basically, polar molecules are going to have stronger intermolecular bonds because they're more polar. That will then give them higher melting and boiling points. Non-polar molecules typically have lower melting and boiling points because they have weaker intermolecular bonds. However, there is a proviso on this. 
And that is that as you get larger molecules with larger electron clouds, the strength of the intermolecular bonds automatically increases. So really this is this statement here about polar and nonpolar is only relative relevant for molecules of the same general molar mass. Okay, so you know you can compare water and ammonia and methane because they all have pretty similar molar masses, but you cannot compare water and decane with 10 carbons because they have very different molar masses okay so that's just a little point there but generally speaking higher melting and boiling points mean you have stronger intermolecular forces okay solubility the general rule for solubility is that like dissolves like now you cannot put that in your exam answer but it's a good rule of thumb to remember and what it means is that polar molecules typically dissolve in polar solvents such as water. Nonpolar molecules typically dissolve in nonpolar solvents such as hexane or cyclohexane. So that's really important just to be aware of. There are sometimes questions that will ask things like explain why molecule A is more soluble in solvent X than solvent Y. Um, and it comes back to this. And the reason is that the polar molecules will form intermolecular bonds with polar solvents because both of them have positive and negative parts on the molecules. Whereas nonpolar molecules tend to form intermolecular attractions with other nonpolar molecules um, because they don't tend to have those positive and negative bits. If you have a polar solvent, like water, all the positive and negative bits of the different water molecules will be attracted to each other, and they'll be attracted to each other far more than they'll be attracted to the nonpolar thing you're trying to dissolve in. This is effectively why things like alkanes and oil don't dissolve in water. That's because of the strength of these intermolecular attractions. Okay, so those are the two key properties that we really talk about for molecular substances. However, there are two other properties that we really need to think about overall, and sometimes you get asked to compare and contrast. First one is electrical conductivity. And blanket statement, there are no exceptions to this rule. Molecular substances do not conduct electricity, except for a few very specific cases like conducting polymers, but you don't need to know about those for this topic. And the reason being that to conduct electricity, a substance needs to have freely moving charged particles. Now, molecules, so charged particles could be freely moving electrons or ions. Molecules don't have any ions in them and their electrons aren't free to move, so they cannot conduct electricity. The final property that you will get asked about sometimes is about whether a substance is malleable or ductile or brittle. None of those words really apply to molecular substances. I mean, if you think about solid molecular substances, the, the properties can be so variable. Um, you think about ice. Would you describe ice as malleable or ductile or brittle? Or None of those words really apply. Um, and that's because the properties that they refer to, malleable and ductile, relate to a specific type of bonding, ultimately. The same thing with brittleness. Um, so, in general, you're not going to get asked questions about this, other than to say, you know, compound ABC is not whatever. Okay. So those... This is a very, very quick run through on intermolecular bonding and how this affects the properties of molecular substances. As you can see, it's really significant for melting and boiling point and solubility. And later on, I will create a video which looks at how to answer exam questions that are asking you to compare the properties of different substances. So keep an eye out for that one. I'll see you then. Bye-bye.